welcome, welcome. And this review is for the Bell Collective Season 2. And y'all want to know what I thought my first impression or reaction was uh, when this show first came on? This is it. Oh my God! Are we here again? I'm going to tell me, I don't know, does Carlos King put in an ad in the paper or on the internet or something that says, hear ye, hear ye, calling all women with cheating husbands and side babies. Is there a billboard um, around the country that I don't know about? Is there an ad running on Instagram or Facebook that I haven't seen? Because it seems like Carlos King loves to bring to us cheating husbands and side babies i mean is it his mission to go around and expose all the husbands in the world for cheating i know that they say that um cheating only happens in what 30 percent of relationships i don't know according to carlos king it's it's up to 80 percent i don't even know what the real statistics are anymore um like they used to say in the church you either um going through something just came out of something or about to go through something and is that what Carlos King is trying to tell us now? Are we as women, um, we are the, either we've been cheated on, about to be cheated on, or um, we about to cheat or something else. I don't know what it is because he clearly is sending a message. He is telling us that there's no other information or anything that will entertain us besides exposing uh, cheating husbands because here we are are again i don't know i'm kind of feeling some kind of way about it i don't know if i want a gay men always telling me about cheating men i mean are they secretly trying to steal the men from the women aren't gay men straight women's competition in some ways i don't know do they be trying to turn out straight men i don't know i don't want to ruffle no feathers or nothing but um i don't know this is starting to feel like you know when you're talking to a girlfriend and she always bring you the tea about your husband or your boyfriend you be looking at her like are you trying to steal my man from me why are you all investing in what he doing I'm starting to look at Carlos King with a side eye because right now he's starting to be a one trick a pony. But what happened to Antoinette? I mean, I saw everybody else came back and they got some new people. But what happened to Antoinette? I mean, I liked her on the show. I thought she brought a different flavor. I don't like when everybody's the same. I know some people didn't like Antoinette. She was the dentist. But I thought she brought something different to the show. Does anybody know what happened to her? We're sorry. The number you have dialed is not in service at this time. I mean, did she get fired? Did she decide she didn't want to come back? Did her de dental business um, blossom and she didn't want all this drama in her professional life? I don't know. Does anybody else know what really happened? But of course, Letitia's back. I guess she's the head honcho. I guess Letitia's kind of like the ringleader of the group. And maybe she's the one that put this all together. But she's back. And let me tell you, she looks good. She done dropped some pounds. She talking about she going to the gym. She eating better. She taking care of herself better. She good. She looked good. She really dropped some pounds, and she she you know she getting that nice slim waist going on, and and her hair looked all nice. She done upgraded her wigs or her lace fronts or whatever it is. That even looks better. I'm telling you, she is much improved. She talking about she got ten sources of income. When did we get to ten sources of income? I thought we was all just working on two or three. And she just said she up to 10 sources of income. She, she running laps around all of us. Then she dropped the bond that she and um, Glenn are separated. She done moved out the house and moved into the house with her mama and everything. I was like, what happened? What happened? And come to find out, this is back for something that happened seven years ago. I guess, you know, when he cheated, which we knew he had cheated before. But I guess there's supposed to be some baby out there that he's had. And she want to know, um, is the baby really Glenn's? Well, don't they have no DNA tests in Jacksonville? I don't know. I know they've been getting rid of abortions all around the world. But did they get rid of uh, DNA tests too? She can't have no DNA test done. Why she still don't know if it's his baby or not. And then I don't know why all of a sudden she acting on something from six, seven years ago. See, this is what I think happens. I think that La Letitia, La La Letitia already knew about this side baby years ago before this show even came on. And what happens to a lot of women is they deal with things secretly in the dark. But once it comes to light, they're embarrassed. They're embarrassed and now they feel like they have to act on it. I don't think this is something she just found out about. I think she's been knowing about this, but now that she's on TV, she's embarrassed. So she feels she has to do something now about it because she doesn't want to look bad out here. A lot of women are only acting on this um, sort of infidelity and stuff because they're embarrassed now. If the same thing happened to, to Melody and things like that, I'm not saying whatever gets them to, to change is not good, but I'm saying embarrassment 
tends to make women make different decisions. If no one ever found out about this or, or they just kept it hush hush and they went on about their life, um, she probably would still be with Glenn. I really do believe that because you could tell by this episode, she's still in love with him. She's crying. She's saying she wants her family back. Her baby's going through turmoil. And I think if um, this show hadn't come along, she would have just gone on and moved on with this man and they would have still been a family. And maybe she would have just stayed with him because she didn't have the money to live on her own. Maybe, you know, she did really did want to keep her family intact now she got to move back with her mama i know she getting a check from this bell collective and uh, glenn's like dang i guess she don't need my oil money no more because i know he makes good money on that oil rig then people make a lot of good money on that oil rig so he was probably definitely providing for her but now that she got her own check she's like to hell with this she done moved out moved in with her mama but she's hurt i mean it was it was sad watching her cry it was sad watching her baby go through it i really don't know the answer out here um, for um, women for men for relationships for families i really don't know what it is and glenn had the same old answer all the other men have is i'm um, that woman don't mean nothing to me she don't mean no, nothing to me and leticia's always talking about well how you can go up in her a uh, raw dog you didn't have no protection or nothing like that and you up here sleeping with her, impregnating her. The same thing people said with Martell and Coleslaw. It's like you not only you cheating, but you cheating without a condom. <laughs> it's just sad to watch. It's sad to hear. And he come over, he started mocking her. She talking about, um, he's like, oh, is this part of your self-care? I don't know why he mocking it. I guess women's calling everything self-care. Now self-care means when I'm doing me and I'm taking care of me and looking more out for myself than looking out for you. Um, the women calling that self-care now. And I guess that's what she's doing. She's saying, you know what? I'm not just thinking about my baby i'm just not thinking about you i'm thinking about me and my happiness and so she decided to move on out he said he fight for his marriage he said he just a little bit toxic what's a little bit toxic um any amount of toxicity can kill you he talking about he just a little bit toxic and she was saying she don't think he could be a one woman man he probably can't because if it's been going on all these years um i don't know i don't know if it happened eight years ago and now he's clean and he's been good then she started talking about um when he did repropose he was texting the lady the same day but but that was six seven years ago so i really don't know where we are but i do believe that had she not been on this show she probably would have been secretly at home dealing with this and trying to work it out with her man but because of the public scrutiny she's decided she had to do something different in fact what she said was here she is uplifting women telling women what to do and here she is in this situation and i think that's what happens to a lot of women it even happened on uh, love and marriage dc I think when winter going on, she started talking about saying, you know, how can you be one woman in the public, but then you're going and you're battling these things in, in the private. So women have this feel like this obligation, I guess, to say, you know what, I can't be talking one game and doing another game. Um, I don't know what the solution is, ladies. I really, it's a it's a it's a, it's a bad situation. Is this just in heterosexual communities? Um, where the lesbians at? Um, are, are 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 lesbians cheating on each other at the same rate heterosexuals are cheating on each other? And nowadays they say uh, women are cheating just as much as men are cheating i don't know is cheating just part of our uh, fabric of the american society now what is going on i mean i know friends that broke up with a cheating husband and the next thing you know they're dating a new man and i said well oh who are you dating they go oh, he's divorced why is he divorced because he cheated on his wife what so you divorced your cheating husband to marry to get with another man whose wife had divorced him because he was cheating so are we just passing around cheaters i don't know what's going on out here y'all i am so confused then tamper cherry is back and we found out the man she's dating um i guess he's been cheating on her with this friend of uh, leticia and i'm like i don't understand i mean is jacksonville this small <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. But one thing they was talking about, you know, she went and she had all these to the doctor. She said she had to have fibroids removed, 39 fibroids. That's a lot. I had that surgery too, but I didn't have no 39 fibroids, but she had to have 39 fibroids removed. That's a lot. And ain't she old? She's still talking about having a baby. I thought she was a lot older. I thought she was in her 40s or something. I might be wrong. Don't get mad at me, Tamara, if I'm, if I'm making you older than what you are. Uh, but they started making fun of her because she had never had unprotected self sex with um this guy demand well i was like i don't know why they're making fun of her do women do that she's back in my day see we was worried about aids and stuff we wasn't i wasn't having no unprotected sex with no man who was just a boyfriend i wasn't married to uh-uh because the concern wasn't just getting pregnant the concern was like i ain't get no aids i ain't get no std from you you ain't my husband you don't get to be, be raw dog up in me uh-uh so i don't know why they was um clowning tambra sharif for not having unprotected sex with this desmond and it's 
like it's good she didn't because it sounds like he's um sharing his D with other women. So maybe she was like, maybe she already knew it. And maybe she's like, listen, I already know you sleeping around with other people. And you're not going to be going over here and coming over here and double dipping and doing all this other kind of stuff. And she said, no, 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 no. Uh, you're going to button that up and put a jacket on that. Plus, I don't even know how long they've been going out. Because last season was when she kind of just rekindled... Um, the sort of love affair with him. I knew they knew each other for 20 years and they've been friends, but from according to her last last year season, um, they weren't sleeping together. So I think that sleeping together is a new thing. But she already at the doctor talking about having a baby. Uh, he basically going to be a sperm donor. I think she just picked him to be the baby daddy. Um, she probably not even going to stay with him. She probably going to end up getting pregnant, have the baby with him, and eventually she's she, she going to break up with him. I don't really feel like there's really any love between this couple. I just think that it's like a business relationship, to be honest with you. And Latrice is back. She got a breast done. What's, what she got was called Mercy and something else. She said, um, her husband, her zaddy husband, trying to get her to have a baby. She goes, ah, uh, there's zero chance of that happening. She said, you already got five kids. Uh, you need to stay happy with the five kids. I don't want no babies. That's not the life I want. There's a lot of women making that decision. That's probably why she man married a man 20 years older with five kids. Because she was like, there ain't no pressure on her to have no baby. I think the only reason he wants her to have a baby is because I think that locks her down a little bit more to him. I think he's starting to get a little bit nervous uh, because she's blowing up. She in Forbes magazine and everything. Her business done blown up. And he's like, I got this young pretty thing. I need to lock her down. Make sure she don't try to move on to some other younger man. I do think a baby is sort of like his security blanket with her. I do agree with her on that. But good for her. I'm glad to see a black woman getting into this hair business because as much money as we spend on hair and makeup and all this other kind of stuff, we need some more black people to get some of that coin and making some of that money. Uh, because it's about time that people like Portia Williams and now her. And, you know, you got all these people on different shows making money in the beauty industry. I love to see it because we've been giving our money to other people for too long on these hair products. And I'm, I'm glad to see some black women getting a little piece of that pie. And talk about making money. Um, Miss Marie Monroe, she says she cleaned up with these methadone clinics out here. She says she got clinics everywhere making all kind of money. Uh, good for her. I'm happy for her. She another one that lost weight. She lost weight and so did her friend Essie. And she cleared it up real soon that she and uh, Essie ain't no lesbians. Because I know that was going around last year a lot. She said, let me clear it up. I like men. I am not a lesbian. But both of them lost weight too. I don't know. They all lost weight over the season, y'all. They might need to post their weight loss uh, system because they all looked a lot better. Like Essie lost weight. Um, Marie Monroe lost weight. Like I said, Latre Letitia uh, lost weight. But I feel sorry for Marie, M Marie Monroe. I don't know. I think she got like some codependency going on. She got a lot of people hanging on her that so she got to take care of. She was already taking care of that grown son of hers. Now she got to take care of all his kids. And unfortunately, we find out that one of the baby mamas got shot up in the car. Good Lord, what was that all about? Horrible, horrible story. Just really broke my heart. But now the boys are going to be responsible for, I guess, raising the baby. And we already know he couldn't even raise, help raise the babies when the mama was alive. So now we got Marie Monroe taking on even more work, not only with the grown son, but now even more work with the grandsons. And now she's also taking care of her mama, who's a drug addict. Good Lord, is, is Marie Monroe like codependent? Does she just, I mean, she runs a whole methadone clinic. I know people say you have a heart for caring for each other, but is there a point in time? when you are just taking on so much that it's actually detrimental to your own health I just don't know I think she might if, if, if there is such a thing I think she might be there she taking care of a lot of people y'all that's a lot of weight to carry on your shoulders and is her husband Cedric is he gone forever I don't think so because they showed some previews coming up for next week and he back on camera time so I guess whatever breakup they had it ain't a real breakup and like we said we learned last season uh, that he was off gallivanting with some new woman so like I said I don't know Carlos King so it's to bring these women on and they go systematically woman by woman are breaking down their marriages so last year we was dealing with Cedric and Marie Monroe's infidelity cheating I guess this year we're dealing with uh, La Letitia's infidelity Tamara's infidelity uh, so I guess Latrice you up next you up next girl get ready the new girl they inter introduced called uh, So Gucci it's like she gonna bring a lot of drama she gonna be something because the little comment she has made on this episode um, they was fiery but we didn't find out too much about her besides that she's a top real estate agent um, in the area but I'm quite sure uh, we gonna hear a lot from her especially since she walk around telling everybody that her marriage is perfect and she is perfect <laughs>
That's like putting a bullseye on your chest or on your back on these reality shows. The minute a woman starts talking about how she's perfect and her marriage is perfect, it brings out all the claws, all the investigators, all the reporters. Let me tell you, they're going to bring up every dirt on you to prove that you ain't perfect and your man ain't perfect and neither is your marriage. I'm telling you, you pump yourself up like that, it's going to be plenty of women to come around and people come around who are going to be ready to tear you down. Uh, so get ready, Miss Gucci. Uh, get ready. Anyway, that's it, y'all. Did you enjoy the episode? Let me know if you um, are watching uh, Bell Collective. Talk to you later. Bye.